Our next speaker is Kelsey Harper from Butler Community College, and she'll be speaking about OER in Spanish for specific professions. So Kelsey, yes, the, floor, the floor is yours. All right, thank you so much. So, okay, yeah, I am Kelsey Harper. I'm the Foreign Language Department Chair at Butler Community College. We are in Kansas, uh, close to Wichita, Kansas, the biggest city in Kansas, by the way. Um, Anyhow, so I recently finished my PhD at Texas A&M University, um, and I kind of got into OER through uh, uh, Dr. Gabriela Zapata. So she developed um, trayectos with some graduate students, and that kind of inspired me to take the whole OER concept to my, you know, my first big girl job. So, um, and our institution also happens to be moving toward OER. Um, it's not. I wouldn't say it's mandated toward everybody, but we're moving that way to where our deans and our administration is highly encouraging us to select OER materials. Um, so today I'm gonna to be talking quickly about uh, Spanish for the Professions, kind of my goals for the program, uh, starting with culinary arts, which I've been able to develop, develop over the past year. Uh, the reason why OERs are so important, especially for community colleges, are for the reasons that were mentioned in the keynote address. You know, these aren't just stats. I get to see it every day. I, I have students in my office crying because they can't afford the books or because they, uh, they haven't been able to buy groceries that week or they don't know where they're going to live that night. So this is real. It's very real and I get to see it. Um, so you can kind of see a breakdown of our student population here. And then from our very own financial aid director, she said that, you know, students have to choose, are they gonna pay tuition and fees or are they gonna get books? They can't do both. So this really just fuels my mission of creating OER in whatever ways I can for my department. Okay, so when I needed to develop OER for a culinary Spanish course, I tried to see what was already available. And the, <laughs> The sad thing was there was nothing ready made, ready to go. The book that we were using was based, it was basically just a bunch of lists of vocabulary with no activities whatsoever. And all of the vocabulary was in command form. Uh, and it just, it was isolated language, no interpersonal communication whatsoever. And I started noticing a trend in all the material out there for Spanish for specific professions everything that's out there is kind of written under the assumption that the only interaction that students are going to have with Spanish speakers are in a situation where they're telling them what to do. And so that's, that's another issue in and of itself, but I wanted to change that and create some material that's interactive and allows students to be a part of their community, not just assuming that they're going to be barking orders at Spanish speakers. Uh, so how to access, this is housed in Canvas you to, to, to be able to see it you do need a canvas account but it's free uh, when you click on that and I, I can post a link here you should be able to see this this is what uh, somebody who does not have a if you don't use canvas at your institution that shouldn't matter you should be able to see this um, so I've divided it by module I taught the course face to face with our terrible old textbook and I just found out I made it my mission to find out what do these culinary students need to know? I had never worked in a restaurant myself, so I, I really had no idea. I learned from them, okay, they need to know how to speak with people. They need to learn how to interact with back of the house employees, basic greetings, et cetera, vocabulary. Uh, so I broke up the modules into things that they need to know or that would be useful for them. Uh, let me just show you a sample activity. Well, before that, I guess I should say that this is not an all or nothing material. This is great if you're teaching a culinary course or if you're just on a unit about food, you might find one module that you like or one activity that you like. It's not all or nothing. It's very adaptable, very mix and match. Um, Here's a sample activity. So I found a video on YouTube uh, and it's about somebody just showing off where they work basically. Um, Okay, so basically he walks everybody through the restaurant and he's just telling about the different roles in the restaurant. So I thought that combined really well with 
a unit on uh, different roles within a restaurant, what people do. So this is pretty much what the entire course is like. I found materials that weren't necessarily didactic in their purpose and then created uh, teaching materials around those, which wasn't a walk in the park, but it ended up being a really nice thing in the end for students to do. So you could see just a few basic true false and then a little more digging in, making connections, uh, learning a little more about culture. Um, code switching, why are most of the food names in English? I get them to think about uh, Spanish and how it's not necessarily all or nothing, how it kind of combines with the local culture, um, very uh, code switching type of situation, which is probably what they're gonna find themselves in working in a restaurant. Okay, so that's, that's the gist of this. Um, each unit kind of starts with, um, you could see an overview if you want to know exactly what's going to be covered, you know, identify and say basic food items, talk about what is needed for different recipes, and then all of the activities are built around those objectives, of course. Um, so let's see. Let's head back to my presentation here. And I tried to, when possible, I tried to incorporate a lot of our local community here. So there's a restaurant called Paleteria Tropicana. And it's very interesting because the menu is not, it's not all in Spanish, nor is it all in English. So if you were only, if you were monolingual in Spanish, the menu would make no sense. If you were monolingual in English, the, me the menu would make no sense. So I try to get students to focus on that and why, um, why that is, you know, it's a multilingual community. and it's not so far away like a lot of people think. So, okay, if you need to contact me, this is my information. I know uh, Canvas might not necessarily be your, uh, your LMS, that's fine. You can either just, you can email me, I can send you the materials or you can, it's downloadable here. And that's all I have. Thank you. It looks like we have about eight minutes for questions. Okay, I'm checking the... Yes, you can access the... Um, I'll post the link right here and you can access it if you don't have Canvas. It's accessible. And yes, community colleges, I feel that we are the leaders in the OER space. We need... Um, I don't know if, I know four-year institutions know that it's important, but I feel like I get to really feel the effects of it here working at a community college. I get to see firsthand what OERs do for students that really don't have um, the means to, to afford a $200 textbook. So it is important. Let me post the link. If you do have Canvas, it's easy to import this. Just you could get the whole course right into your LMS. What did I learn from the needs analysis of my students? You mean when I, the culinary students specifically, or just? Hello? Carl, can you specify? Oh yeah, what did they say they needed? The culinary students. Well, what we were doing for them before I got the needs analysis going was not what they needed at all. It was just, it was a program called Command Spanish, which, you know, it, it, it could be useful in some ways, but not for what they needed. They, they needed to know the names of specific objects in a restaurant. They needed to know how to talk with the back of the house staff, mostly um, dishwashers. Um, and it wasn't like they needed to tell them what to do. They just want to be able to talk to them in any way. Just hola, como estas? Just basic greetings, phrases. Uh, 
part of working with colleagues. So that was that was what stuck out to me was they just need basic Spanish and we're going way too far into what we're teaching them as far as it was just thousands of commands that they were memorizing, wrote, wrote memorization. It wasn't, um, it wasn't useful for them. Uh, I found the videos through just going on YouTube, looking for maybe not necessarily didactic materials, making sure that they were creative commons or didn't have some sort of a, a license. And no, the students don't have any background in Spanish for before taking the class. However, it could be adapted to be um, at a little more higher of a level if that's what you need. Uh, my students are all uh, in this particular class. They're all culinary arts majors. So it's a two year program. Um, and they are usually straight out of high school. Um, yeah, but, but this class, I would say, is almost always 100% culinary arts students. So I really get to be like their first introduction to formal Spanish for a lot of them. Yes, I do. Um, well, we have, we've kind of experimented with an online section. So that's, I'm struggling to keep up the interpersonal, you know, speaking in Spanish aspect with the online section. But when it's face to face, the course is taught in Spanish, just at a very scaffolded basic level. Uh, well, when the class is taught face to face, they practice orally by um, uh, practice situations in class. I could show you one of those. Let's see, aquí está. So practice situation. They're practicing ordering and taking an order. Let me share this. Let's see. So here's a sample practice situation. So you're the customer, place an order and include the following, a greeting, order at least one beverages, two dishes, etc. So in this way, they really have to practice situations that they would actually see at their jobs. Okay. Any other questions? Sorry, everybody. This is kind of weird for me, like not being able to hear people and talk to people. If anyone wants to unmute, we have three minutes left. So you're welcome. Uh, so the format of the class, I guess, with COVID has been, it was it used to be fully face-to-face. -face. Uh, this semester is our first semester fully online. I don't know that we'll go back to that just because we have lost a lot of that. You know, I can ask them to Zoom with each other and record, but since there's no synchronous aspect to the way we do online, it does pose a challenge for interpersonal speaking. Uh, Shannon asked, have I worked yet on any other profession focus? Uh, that's the goal. We have Spanish for um, construction, Spanish for, yeah, somebody asked Spanish for landscaping, health, perfection, health professions. We have all of these. Our just, the, the problem is our department is very limited. It's it, the only two full-time people are myself and another person. Um, we are, kept pretty busy, but this is this is a goal of mine to expand throughout all the professions because I think that's where we can really serve our students. Yeah, Spanish for health professions. That's I think that is one of the that is one where you probably will find more materials out there. It's the it's the courses that are offered more commonly at community colleges where you just find the lack of 
uh, resources out there, or the really odd resources that aren't very um, communicative or uh, really within current research. Is it a workforce course or a transfer course? It's a, I, I, if you mean workforce course and that it's just a certificate and they're done, it, it is kind of that way. Uh, most of the courses I teach are transfer courses, but this particular course, they don't usually transfer. They just finish this culinary arts program and they're done. So if anybody works I, at a community I had, college. I had a question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a vocal question. Did uh, How long did it take you to make this module? Like if you want to reproduce this across lots of different um, fields, what's your calendar look like for that? And do they provide um, you with some sort of development funds or is this just all volunteer work? Uh, no, so that, that's a really good question. Is uh, So we are provided with some type of a stipend, no release time or anything, but we, we can apply for stipends for these things because our college really does believe in, in OER and, uh, and they want to support us in these endeavors. So they do give us a good motivation to, to, to get these things created. Um, but it did take me... I would say about a year, because I was working largely by myself um, to create a 16 week course fully, <laughs> no textbook and uh, yeah, maybe eight months to a year 